do just don't fight it don't create any form of disharmony with the mind just become its friend use the tools of yoga and after some time you will find that you will be able to master it control it if you want to but mastering is better so in our process in our program the whole entire structure is to learn how to master the mind through breathing techniques first you approach it indirectly through breathing and asanas through aligning the body properly by allowing the body to stretch you will also learn to stretch away the stresses minor stress mind is easier to control right and by utilizing the second part of it which is breathing your mind is able to listen to us now most people maybe not you maybe you are practitioners of some form of science or meditation or, or breathing and all that but most people they tell us that they can't control the mind they can't control the mind are you surprised no surprise huh? they this they say can't i just cannot take my mind out of this thing right? i saw this person and then this person was so nice to me you know that they were so caring and compassionate and then i saw them during this time during this retreat or during this gathering i came out of that and i still keep on thinking about them i can i am not able to balance my mind this is called what this is called attachment attachment so all the time they have to communicate with the person all the time they have to see them or talk to them or sms them all the time if it is not there they feel unhappy but they only met them for about 10 days during a retreat or a course but they become very dependent on them some individuals cannot live without their friends they just have to have their friends if their friends are there they become very worried so who is in control now I'm not so sure it's who is the mind is overpowering them with all this so what what will happen in yoga is that you can be with them you cannot you can be without them it doesn't matter to you because yours is self mastery and from the asanas from the asanas you learn a certain degree of being independent where the body when the body feels fit you will feel very confident that we able to do things on our own self when the breathing is very stable and you are able to control it able to manage it able to hold the breath naturally <laughs> exhale naturally long inhale long naturally exhale longer naturally and hold the breath naturally you will find that the mind becomes centered very quickly you will be even surprised on how centered the mind can become through this simple breathing techniques so in our program self mastery we start with very simple practice but we build up the momentum to the highest level of practice that if you go after learning this program after learning the techniques of this program you go to any ashram in india you will be able to sit with the swami ji with the sadhus and practice together that's how high level this is and even some of the kriyas that you learn many of the sadhus don't know this because this uh, kriyas were revealed in 1960 for by a very renowned yogi by the name of swami satyananda saraswati and he was the only one who in the history of yoga in the known history of yoga revealed these techniques none of the upanishads none of the tantric texts have clear indication of these kriyas they are very obscure they are very hidden coded impossible to decode these techniques even in the south indian siddha literature also very difficult because you need to know very deep tamil to understand this but you can decode it in tirumandiram and all that but it's very difficult some of the schools in bengali tantric uh, tantric exam also very difficult to de- to decode almost 90% of all yogic literature remains untranslated 
and we have 50,000 titles of yoga in English. Can you imagine? You have 50,000 translated yoga literature or written literature, 50,000 titles. And these 50,000 on, is only 10%. 90% remains untranslated in Sanskrit and Tamil. So, most of the techniques until today is still hidden and kept secret by the yogis and by some families. They still keep it, they will not reveal this. There is a place in Gaya, right, where the family holds the secret of some herbs, where they put, they give you the herbs, you eat, your hair turns black. If the hair is grey, for five years it will remain black. But it is pure herbs. <laughs> they will never tell anyone the secret. It just remains in the family. Isn't that fantastic? So like this they have this kind of sciences. They have these healing powers. In Kumbha Mahala, in 2001 when I, when I was there, uh, there is also a lot of amazing things they were doing. They, will, they give herbs, they give some special ointments and immediately you can see some changes. There was a lady who was called the HIV Mataji. HIV Mataji means she doesn't have HIV. She was able to cure HIV just by some form of mantras and some form of healing. He cured it. There was one uh, Naga Baba who was uh, <coughs> naked and anybody comes to him, he was just able to uh, you know, produce the mala, you know, this thing, the Rutrasha mala just from thin air and start giving and then they will whisper in their, in their ears and they will be like this because that's what they have been looking for, some answers. So like that, there are many miracles. Right? But all these miracles are just like the hair miracle all remains for a short term only. It is only for short term. Eventually the disease comes back. Because you are depending on another person. Correct? It's all kind of psychic things, all temporary. So, the greatest miracle that we can work upon ourselves is the miracle of disciplining ourselves to practice yoga consistently. And the practice of yoga consistently is to do it every week, at least about half an hour, two or three times a week. It doesn't mean that you sit down in a special place and a special time to do it. The techniques that you can learn through these techniques which are given by Swami Satyananda are techniques which you can do while driving, while sitting in the bus, while traveling in the plane, while listening to some uh, conference. Right? If, you're, if someone is talking, while listening, you can practice. In any place you can practice. Even now you can practice if you know the techniques. So these techniques do not need some special time or special circumstances because we don't have time, correct? In this age, people have wealth, high disposable income. People have luxury. Right? They got car just in front of the center, just go and then drive, no need to walk, correct? So this is good, fine cuisines, everything is nice. We have everything except time. We don't have time, correct? This practice, these techniques will not ask you to spend some extra time. Just in whatever we do, we can just incorporate. Even asanas, if you want to do, you need to have some time to do this. Correct. You need to have half an hour. But in this technique, you don't need that. While walking, you can do. While waiting for your son or daughter to come from tuition, you can do. While shopping, you can do. If your wife is shopping, if your husband doesn't shop. So, whatever that they are doing, you can practice this. That's how powerful and simple and practical this yoga is. Because we all breathe all the time, right? There is a way of manipulating the breath. 
in such a way that it becomes, every moment becomes a process of awakening. That after two hours, some awakening has taken place. That you have grown. Right? That you, after you sleep, you awaken the next day, you feel that you have grown. That something inside has developed. You have become wiser. Through these techniques, we have amazing techniques which we can be able to center ourselves at all times. Not only the breath, but other significant processes in our body which we do every day will help us to master ourselves. And this is called Kriya. Kriya Yoga is mentioned in the Upanishads and also the Tantric text to be 76. There are 76 secret uh, Kriyas. We don't have time. Right? So, what Swami Satyananda did was he took the best of the 76, 20 of the 76, the best ones, he practiced in caves and Gangodri and all that, he found the one that works well for the fragmented mind, the broken mind, like ours. Our mind is broken, it's dissipated. He said for men and women in society, this 20 Kriyas arranged in this sequence according to this number of rounds will eventually unify the broken mind. The mind which is dissipated, which is confused, which is diseased, will heal itself. By the practices, it will heal itself, it will unify. This is the purpose of yoga. The meaning of yoga itself is unification, becoming one with itself by these practices. You will find that when you do Kriya, the mind will be rotating the Kriyas and you will be, sometimes you will be dreaming. You will be rotating and you find that you are dreaming. And then you are able to even control the dream. You can even restructure the dream. So if you can restructure and control and manipulate the dream, what about conscious mind? It becomes very easy. The ability to concentrate, the ability to visualize comes back to us. We have lost the ability to concentrate and also to visualize. Our visualization is not as good as children. And with that, we also lose the awareness to be in joy. Children are always happy, correct? Below the age, before they go to school. Huh? The moment they go to school, they start losing joy. Before school, they are very happy. The reason why they, start, they, they lose their joy is because there are two parts, components of one, the brain. That is, you have the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Children are more on the, of the right hemisphere. Right hemisphere, you are able to visualize. You are able to create imaginary friends. Right? Children will be talking to themselves sometimes. Right? They will be laughing, they will say that this is a friend of mine, they will talk, they will talk in the bathroom, shout laughing and all that. So they are able to create something for them which is real. It's how powerful the child's mind is. Also with joy. Then when you go to standard one or you go to kindergarten when you start learning A, B, C, D and 1, 2, 3, 4, the left brain takes over. The left brain which is analytical, which is of reasoning, logic, it takes over. This right brain, which is of creative visualization, joy, becomes dimmer, this becomes brighter, and with this, one loses one's joy. And all adults, 90% of all adults, are not happy. There's just no happiness. In order to get back this joy, very simple. You just have to awaken the right brain, that's all. Awaken the right brain, just, just like how children before school have it. Children before going to school have predominant right brain functioning. For us to get back the same joy, we awaken the right brain. And yoga is about right brain. Even the asanas that you do, the headstand, the balancing asanas, bhujang asana, all the asanas are right brain training. It is not physical, you cannot call it physical exercise. It is higher physical exercise because it awakens the right brain. And more so is the manipulation of the breathing and more so is what we call as Kriya. 